Hi guys and welcome to another Brixton Education video. I'm Rob and today I'll be looking at the behavior of the request reply block with a use case that you may run into while creating your flows. Some time ago a client had a situation where their JMS messages were being delayed by 10 seconds. However no exceptions were being thrown and the flow continued processing normally after the delay. This was quite strange since the JMS broker was running as part of the Mule instance, not as an external system. The client's flow was very similar to the one you can see here. While looking at these two flows, let's consider some points. Firstly, as the JMS transport is asynchronous, a second queue has to be supplied to receive messages back from the JMS broker. Whenever a message is sent from a JMS outbound endpoint that has been set to request response, Mule will create a temporary queue on the fly and set the reply to message property to the name of the temporary queue. And thirdly, the request reply block in the flow will also set the reply to message property this time to the name of the queue defined by the JMS inbound endpoint, namely Q2. So let's consider how we can expect this flow to behave. On receiving a message on the HTTP endpoint, it will be sent to JMS flow through the JMS outbound endpoint and reply to set to a temporary value as I described a moment ago. But this value will then be overwritten to Q2 by the request reply block. So messages are set to arrive on the JMS inbound endpoint, not on the temporary queue where the JMS outbound endpoint is listening. So where does the 10 second wait come from? Remember that the outbound endpoint is listening on the wrong queue and 10 seconds just happens to be the default response timeout value of the JMS endpoint. Once the endpoint times out, the pending message on Q2 is picked up and the flow continues normally and passes the message out to HTTP. So to fix this behavior, all we need to do is to set the exchange pattern of both JMS endpoints to one way. This will prevent the outbound JMS endpoint creating a temporary queue and waiting until timeout for messages that will not be returned. And inbound messages will be picked up immediately on Q2, which is the required behavior. So let's confirm this by running the flows in Anypoint Studio. Oh, in case you are not already aware, you will need to have the ActiveMQ library added to your build path for this to run. Let's start the application, which will then wait for messages via HTTP in entry flow. I'll now make a request using Postman. And as you can see, we have to wait for the reply. Okay, so here's the reply, and as you can see, it took a little over 10 seconds, as we expected. Now let's go back and reconfigure the JMS inbound and outbound endpoints to one way, which is in fact the default when building with Anypoint Studio. And once again, I'll send the request, and bingo! We already have the response, but this time it only took about one third of a second, which is more like what we would normally expect. Well, I hope this has been useful. Be sure to check out the original blog post for more information. If you have any comments, feel free to comment here or on the blog. Stay updated with what's going on with Brixton and in the integration world. Follow us on Twitter. Give us a like on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.